welcome to my home. <laughs> Here we go with how to do ceramics at home. We'll see, I've never filmed a video like this before, so we'll see how it goes. But um, I've got definitely some notes here that will help you uh, to work. <clears throat> so first things first, um, to set up, you need um, yeah, a designated table, I would recommend. Um, here I'm just sitting on the couch with a chest in front of me. So we have um, an old sheet over the little table in front of me here. And I really recommend putting some fabric down because um, not only will it protect the table beneath or your furniture, whatever you have beneath, but it also um, is good for using clay. You know, the clay doesn't stick to it as much versus if you have a, a piece of furniture, especially a piece of furniture that's been treated, that's very smooth, um, it's going to stick and then you're going to be peeling it off and you're going to lose clay and everything. So uh, the clay does not stick to fabric. So it's a nice little way of protecting your furniture. So um, the other thing that I always would use is a uh, little basin of water here. So I've just got some water in a little bowl. Um, this is not necessarily for like using that much water for making stuff. I don't use that much water when I'm hand building. Um, but it's a good habit for cleaning up after yourself. So uh, any clay that gets on the surface, you can just wipe off with a sponge. Or um, if you have a, not a sponge, maybe a, another piece of cloth, um, a towel, something like that. Um, but the key thing here is having water in it. And this is because clay dust is really bad for you. So um, we don't want to be making a big mess, especially in your apartment. So I'm just in my living space right now, but I also have my bed right over there behind the camera. And I don't want to be creating so much dust in this space where I'm breathing it in at all times. If you're just doing this as a hobby, if you are, um, you know, cleaning up after yourself to a normal degree, you don't have to worry about it. This is more of a long-term buildup thing that uh, clay dust will build up in your lungs. So that said, um, don't freak out. <laughs> um, definitely clean up after yourself though. And also it's nice to clean, keep your home clean and your workspace clean for sure. So um, a great way to avoid inhalation of clay dust is to use water when you're cleaning up, right? So use a sponge, use a wet cloth, um, use a mop, don't sweep. So that's the main thing, right? So if you have a little bit of clay dust on the floor, fine, no worries, don't freak out. Just use a sponge to wipe it up or if you have a big mess, use a mop. Um, you don't wanna be sweeping that up because when you sweep it, it gets into your lungs. This is the only really time I'm gonna be talking about safety because everything else is super secure and easy, but it's really important to be talking about safety in the beginning. Okay, so set yourself up for good work habits in the beginning. Um, the other thing that I would recommend having is what we would call a wear board. So in this case, I don't have a wear board with me, so I'm just using a book. Any piece of wood, is great. You can also use a, a book, a hardcover book, of course, because this is where we're going to be putting our pieces on to move them from our workspace away without damaging them. So I always have something like this um, when I'm working from home. And yeah, definitely put the newspaper on top to protect the book or also um, the clay again will stick to the wood. So, and then the other thing that um, is really important to keep in mind when working at home is to protect your drains. So you don't want to be putting clay down your drain. It's going to clog up your drain. Um, and in fact, maybe it doesn't clog your specific drain, but it's going to clog the drain of the building or it's going to clog the sewer system out in the city. So it's, it's kind of serious. Um, you don't want to be clogging up your drains. So um, obviously this, if this is waste, just throw it in the trash. Um, you don't, you're not going to like dilute this with water. The main situation where this happens is with um, clay water. So what I have here is some clay that settled to the bottom and the rest is water on top or a little bit of clay, you know, tiny particles of clay suspended in the water. So if you end up with 
your dish here with a lot of clay slop in it or you do this big cleanup and you have all of this clay put it into a little jar like this wait overnight and all the uh, clay will settle and then you can pour off the top bit and you know just now and down the normal sink um, and the rest of it should go in the trash so assuming that you can't reuse the clay you could if this was just clay in here of course you can reuse it. It will just be a little bit wet, but you just let it dry out and you can reuse it. If there's like, you know, dust or um, pet hair or any other particles in there that's not clay, I would suggest just throwing it in the trash. I mean, the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video is how our take home play works. So here I have one of the packages. Um, each package is two kilo. And um, they come with a little twist tie thing here. So um, keep this little guy because uh, you want to reseal your clay. So anytime you're not using your clay, just seal it up. Make sure it's not coming in contact with any air. So I would usually fold this underneath as well to make sure, doubly make sure there's no air getting in there. Um, if you seal it like that, it's going to last forever. Don't worry about drying out. I mean, maybe in a year or so, it will be a little bit drier than normal, but so long as air is not getting in, it's not gonna dry out. So don't worry about that, okay? So here we have our little instructions. This is, you guys have a prettier one. This is like my template that I made up um, in the beginning. So please read through these instructions when you get it. Um, it's a lot of really important info uh, just about you know, working with clay safely and, um, you know, doing it within reason that we can accommodate in our studio. So there's English and there's German. So the main things that you want to uh, focus on here is the limitations that you have. So for number one, don't mix anything into the clay. Don't try and put beads in it. Don't try and put, I don't know what people plan to do with paper, maybe, I don't know. Um, just don't mix anything into the clay. We're not going to be able to fire it if you do that. Um, we fire at 1200, 1220 degrees. So it's really, really hot. Pretty much anything is going to be destroyed in the kiln if you put it in there. And not only that, but if you do put something in there that shouldn't go in there, it could cause a fire. <laughs> if it explodes in the kiln or whatever and you know cause major damage to our kiln. So very serious, please do not mix anything into the clay. There are some limitations about sizing as well, and this is just for our own logistical reasons. I tried to make it as flexible as possible, but please stay within the guidelines. So I say no smaller than a two euro coin, right? So two euro coin is about something like this. This is fine if you wanna make beads or something, um, but uh, please no tiny, tiny little beads. Um, it's just kind of a nightmare um, for us. And then uh, nothing longer than 20 centimeters in any direction, right? So you can make a plate, but don't make a platter. Also because our kiln is only so wide, so um, we're not even gonna be able to fit your piece in the kiln if you make it massive. Um, oh, also, uh, I will talk about this more on a later video, but um, the bottom of your pieces is always going to be unglazed. So every single piece of pottery, um, is unglazed at the bottom. This is a very normal part of the process. Um, and it's about how the piece not sticking to the kiln and all of that. So anyway, um, keep that in mind if you are making something like a bead, because you're not, we're not gonna be able to glaze the entire bead because it has to sit on one part, right? So one side is gonna be the bottom, even if it's like a sculpture or something um, and not just a normal pot. Okay, and then um, really important to write your name on the bottom of your pot um, and also the number of the glaze that you want. So we're giving you six different glazing options. One of them is just no glaze, um, so five different glazes. And um, the numbers are on here. On yours, you'll have a picture of what the glaze actually looks like. Of course, I do recommend you going to the website and looking at the pictures there more clearly because you'll see a lot better than m what my printer can print. Um, so for example, if you choose white, it's number three. If you choose yellow, it's number six. Just write this number six on the bottom. You can also write yellow too, but 
you know, that's a lot of words, especially if you have a small piece. So just write number six. Um, that makes it really easy for you. I know these numbers seem kind of random, but we have like numbered glazes in the studio. So just uh, follow along and put the right number um, on there. Okay, and then definitely your name or your initials. Uh, yeah, and then drop them off whenever. So um, I'm going to be posting uh, on Instagram and um, maybe elsewhere. <laughs> uh, when I'll be in the studio. I'm trying, you know, to go to condense my trips to the studio because obviously we're in quarantine right now. Um, and I think at some point you're not going to be able to necessarily deliver stuff. So don't worry about that. Keep your pieces, just make whatever you want. And um, uh, you can drop it off after all of this craziness is over. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just letting this piece sit on your shelf for a month. Nothing bad is gonna happen to it. It's gonna be just fine. Um, obviously it will dry, but that's actually good. We want it to dry out. We have to have it dry before it goes into the kiln. Um, if it's gonna be a really long time and it's in a place where it might get dusty, I would just put some cloth over it or something because you don't really want them to get dusty. That can just cause problems later with the glazing, but um, dry is absolutely fine and there's no kind of time limit. You could fire something in a thousand years and it would still work so long as it wasn't like crazy dusty or falling apart. So um, be careful though because your pieces when they're dry are going to be really fragile. So um, they're the most fragile that they will ever be in, we call this greenware, in the greenware stage. So before it's fired but once it's completely dried that is the most fragile it's going to be. So just be careful. Put it on a high shelf so your dog or your kid doesn't get it. And um, yeah, and stay tuned. Um, so this is the first of a few videos that I will do on, you know, how to use clay from home. So stay tuned. <laughs> so I did forget to say one thing. Um, so on the front of this um, little package here is um, a little slip that you want to submit with your pieces. We don't want you going home with someone else's pieces and I think you don't want that either. So um, yeah, just fill this out, submit it. You can keep the instructions, um, but we just need this slip. Thanks.